Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I trust and hope that you've been having a fabulous Friday thus far. And so we're going to be looking at the latest for Lee as well as Margo, which is our next active tropical cyclone out there. We also want to take a look at what is going on for the Caribbean and surrounding areas in terms of rainfall activity and then the potential of seeing something develop and maybe headed for the Caribbean. So models have been showing that we're going to see something else developing in the main development region that might be a problem for the Caribbean as we head further into the month of September. So I'll be taking you guys through all of that. And before I go into it, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. Now, before we delve into our active tropical cyclones and what models are expecting, we want to go ahead and look at what is going on across the Caribbean. So as we take a look across parts of the Northern Caribbean this evening, going up to uh, even Florida and even Louisiana is kind of cut off there, but there is some thunderstorm activity taking place across some areas. As we take a look into the Bahamas and parts of the Northern Caribbean, going to Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, we can see that there is some thunderstorm activity. That trough is still in the area that we have been uh, looking at for some time time now. We also see some shower activity popping up across parts of Central America, especially in sections of Mexico, Belize. And uh, as we head to parts of the South Caribbean and Northern South America, we also see that activity taking place. Now we want to go ahead and drift further to the east. And we're seeing that things get a little bit drier as we head down to the Windward Islands, uh, going from around St. Lucia southward to Grenada, including Trinidad, Tobago, and Barbados. So not a whole lot of activity taking place across these areas. But then as we head further up north we can see some scattered showers and thunderstorms so all that moisture being induced by Lee is helping to increase the rainfall activity for some areas nothing too crazy but I mean this is what would be more ideal so some areas have been rather dry there has been drought conditions across some areas so having some of this rainfall would be very much appreciated to act as a relief from all the heat that has been experienced. What we don't want is a major hurricane moving through and doing a lot more harm than good. So Lee, the worst of Lee will be remaining offshore, but it could continue to induce that moisture across the area and those uh, periods of shower activity. And so we're going to be looking at the cyclone in a lot more detail, but first we want to go ahead and talk about Margo. So here we have the cyclone and it is a little bit lopsided so it is fighting a bit of shear out there and potentially some of that dry air and dust as well. And there's another tropical wave that is off the coast of Africa that one is not marked for development right now. So there we have Margo and it hasn't strengthened since it became a named storm. So here we are looking at the cone forecast and we can see that the maximum sustained winds remain at 40 miles per hour and it is continuing to the west northwest at 17 miles per hour. Now the National Hurricane Center expects that it will gradually start to intensify potentially becoming a hurricane as we head into Monday. The good news is it's not going to be a problem for anyone so a fish storm out there and now we want to go ahead and talk about Lee so if we should return to the satellite imagery here we can see that there isn't a clear eye now it is undergoing a phenomenon called an eye wall replacement cyclone when that is happening what we typically have is fluctuations in intensity so it is still a very strong cat for hurricane but it has slightly weakened from what it was earlier this morning so it was a cat 5 with winds up to 160 65 miles per hour so it has weakened a bit from that and sustained winds are now at 150 miles per hour. Once it completes the cycle, though, it could try to re-strengthen up to a Cat 5. But regardless, it is going to be remaining a major hurricane to the north of the Eastern Caribbean as we head into and through most of next week. And so it is currently moving to the west-northwest at 13 miles per hour. As I said, the worst of it, those tropical storm force winds, those hurricane force winds will be remaining offshore. But this is going to be resulting in dangerous surf so in terms of marine interests you have to exercise caution if you're planning to go out because there are going to be some very rough seas out there and that threat of recurrence is going to be significant not only offshore of the Caribbean but also Bahamas Turks and Caicos Islands and the east coast of the U.S. and also Bermuda. So this is going to be a problem in terms of marine activities. Please exercise caution. I cannot emphasize it enough. 
we can start to see the National Hurricane Center showing that curve, which is expected as that frontal system exits the U.S. And uh, looking at this map here, it shows the probability of tropical storm force winds. And we can see that some of the islands are highlighted, but only a very low chance, only a 10% chance at the most of seeing or experiencing rather those tropical storm force winds. So again, the worst of Lee will be remaining offshore. But in terms of Bermuda, parts of the North eastern U.S., Atlantic Canada. You guys should be on watch for potential impacts as we head into the latter part of next week. There is still some uncertainty down the road. We're talking about several days out from now, and there are bound to be some adjustments in the expected track, even with the models. And so we have been seeing that, and we have been talking about it. And as I've been saying as of recently, we just have to continue to watch the system for those changes, because nothing is 100% sure at this point in time. And then now we want to go ahead and talk about the potential of that system, that next storm developing in the main development region, potentially headed to the Caribbean. So we're going to be looking at what a couple of models have to show. And we're kickstarting with the GFS. So where we see all these greens and even some of those yellows, oranges, those uh, those colors represent the precipitation rate. Those black squiggly lines we see, they're called isobars and they join areas of equal pressure. So what we're looking for is seeing a lot of them in a circular manner that are tightly packed. And the more tightly packed we see them, the stronger the system is. And there we have the forecast time. So as we head to over a week out from now, Saturday the 16th of September, there we can see that system developing to the west of the Cabo Verde Islands. As we head further out in time, though, we see that it is intensifying there. And then there's that low pressure system of the U.S., so likely a frontal system coming down. That is going to be providing an opportunity for the system to make its way up to the northwest. And that is exactly what the GFS is expected all the way out to Saturday the 23rd of the month. So we're going really far out in time here and the GFS is expecting that the system will develop but will be making its way out to sea and this is different from one of the previous runs where the model actually expected that something will head into the Caribbean as a tropical storm. So we're bound to see a lot of changes, models going crazy at times then showing nothing. It's going to be that kind of story as we head into the next several days until we actually actually have something out there. But what we're watching is the fact that multiple models are showing something, even though they might disagree in terms of the potential track and intensity, which is expected at this point in time. As we head to Monday, the 18th of the month, the euro is not showing anything defined, but has that tropical wave in the vicinity of the Eastern Caribbean. Very interesting as well. And then the Canadian model is going bullish on this one around the same time, the 18th of September. We can see that it is showing that we're going to have a hurricane making its way into the vicinity of the northeastern islands, the Leeward Islands, and strengthening later on the day as it continues on that seemingly west-northwestward track or that northwestward track. And then as we head to the Icon model, Icon also expecting that this is going to be remaining out to sea, so it is somewhat in agreement with what the GFS model is expecting now. So as I said, there are bound to be changes as we head into the next several days, but what we see in common with most of these models is the fact that they are showing that we will see some sort of development or hints of development as we head later into this month. And this is not something surprising, just interesting to see what will happen. But of course, I'm here to keep track of all that is happening for you guys. And I will continue to keep you posted as time goes by. So that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys in this update. And the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Nigel. So let's wait and see when we'll have Nigel, maybe by the end of next week, going into the early part of the following week. So so that's it for now. I hope you found this video to be quite informative, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.